In prehistoric times, Val de Lobos was occupied by a highly advanced society who built a large city in the region's vast caverns. Val de Lobos, which in English means Valley of Wolves, is a mountainous region of what is now known as Spain. We see evidence of these people in the caverns below Salazar Castle. There is a door which can only be opened via a complex mechanism. There are two statues which depict winged humans with goat's heads. To open the door, you must shine a light through orbs held by these statues, which melts the door made of wax. The switches which activate the lights are accompanied by reliefs which also depict these winged creatures. The door itself is marked by a Los Illuminados insignia. As a side note, the statues are based on ones found on the front of the Royal Academy of Science and Arts of Barcelona. We also see evidence of the ancient society underneath the cathedral before the mines where we see broken columns and structures. On the island, there are cave paintings in the tunnels. The paintings depict human sacrifices. We see a man lying on the ground, being mutilated and having his organs removed. There is a plaga insignia above this painting, suggesting plaga worship. What happened to these people is unknown. Their religion was practiced into the Middle Ages by a pagan community. They caught the attention of a nobleman who ruled over the region. He lived during the Spanish Renaissance when Inquisition had begun to combat heresy in Spain. The ancient religion was seen as a threat to Salazar and he led a crusade against the religious group. A descendant of Salazar named Ramon talks about this event. For many years, the Salazar family has served as castellans of this castle. However, not everything is bright, for my ancestry has a dark past. The persecution of Los Illuminados was brutal. Victims were lined up and slaughtered by the sword. Others were skewered by stakes, which were then ignited. The Plaga parasites were confined within the caverns and sealed away deep beneath the castle. An unused game file suggests a monster resided within a lake nearby the village. This creature was captured and imprisoned in an underwater cave beneath the lake. There were survivors of the cult who remained in the region in secret. A makeshift shrine was fashioned in a cave system to the south of the lake, concealed behind a waterfall. Throughout the following centuries, as feudal lords and castellans, Salazar's ancestors continued to govern and oversee the region. While the rest of Spain changed during the 19th and 20th centuries, the area continued to be preserved in time. Following generations continued to live as though they were in the 18th century. They only made use of contemporary technology when absolutely necessary, otherwise the community was entirely self-sufficient. A pagan cult known as Los Illuminados had emerged. Its followers continued their ancient primal religion and worshipped the Plaga, a parasitic organism capable of affecting the mind of the host. Ramon Salazar ruled over the region by the end of the 20th century. Salazar was not ready for the responsibilities expected of him as he was only a child. By this time, the villagers had mythologized the deeds of their first lord and saw him as a hero, whereas Ramon, the eighth Castellian, was despised. Salazar, who remained in his castle, isolated from the world, became easy prey for prophet Osman Sadler who claimed himself to be the leader of Los Illuminados. Salazar welcomed him into his home, and he was indoctrinated into the ways of the Plaga, 
Eventually, he would follow Los Illuminados and renounce his Catholic faith. He sought to undo the actions his family had taken all of those years ago, as he now viewed them as sinful acts. He commanded the caverns beneath the castle to be unsealed, so the Plaga would be liberated once more. Lacking the small army that had originally sealed the tombs, Ramon needed more men. He misled the people of the village, hiring them as miners, believing that they were performing a simple excavation. Sadler brought in a team of geneticists who assisted him in examining the mummified remains of the Plaga. Their goal was to find a small amount of DNA which would allow them to conduct cloning. A few years into the dig, miners started showing symptoms of an illness which resulted in painful seizures. The lab analysis deducted that they had inhaled live spores which regenerated complete plagas within their chest. In the game, it's thought that El Gigante were first produced from human test subjects during Los Illuminados' experiments on the mutational effects of the plagas on their hosts. Luis Memo 3 supports this. However, in the trial edition, El Gigante originate from Ganados, who were prone to fits of rage, ultimately leading to giantism if not stopped. These individuals would deceive their gods into letting them go after faking being cured, allowing them to continue the violence unchecked and eventually becoming El Gigante. However, the files relating to this story were cut from the final release. In the region's village, there was a writer named Rodrigo. He was given this name by his grandmother, as was local tradition. He spends his time sketching people going about their everyday life in the village, and he intends to show them to future generations. One day, during a holiday, Rodrigo is invited for lunch by a friend. The man is proud of his new job, having been hired to assist in excavations at the nearby castle. Rodrigo is unsure about this, as while he holds the brave tales about the first Castellan in high esteem, he thinks less of the castle's current occupant, Ramon Salazar. As the seasons change, the village celebrates the Harvest Festival. Rodrigo notices the absence of Batores Mendez. It was unusual for the village chief not to attend the festivities. However, Father Mendez also served as their priest, so Rodrigo assumes he is busy conducting vital church work. One afternoon, Rodrigo is accompanied by his brother, who is riding a horse-drawn wagon with supplies for the village. They are on their way to the brother's family in the outskirts, when Rodrigo reminds his brother to attend church service next Sunday as Father Mendez has an important sermon. During the Mass, Mendez introduces the villagers to Lord Sadler. He was a charismatic man who charms the villagers. As days and weeks passed, people became converted submitting themselves to a baptism-like ceremony. Eggs of the Plaga were injected into participants, believing this process to be a blood cleansing ritual, which would purify them of sin. Rodrigo believes the villagers that do not take the ritual will not truly be happy. He has lunch with a villager who has not joined the cult. The man recalls stories of his youth, of Salazar and the Crusade, he is sickened by the cult's presence in the village. Rodrigo forces his brother to join. During the ritual, Rodrigo's brother cries for him to save him. Rodrigo did nothing, believing it was crucial that all villagers go through the ritual. Later, other villagers begin forcing their family members to take part in the ritual an act they believe will save them. The 
the villagers' abattoir became an execution ground for traitors and non-conformers. In the note, Villagers' Last Defense, Mendez says, there is a building used to enlighten betrayers just beyond the point where you get off the lift. The location he's referring to is the slaughterhouse. Inside the abandoned slaughterhouse, also referred to as the torture shed in Brady Games Guide, there are crates, hooks, and chains. Once the victims have perished, they are taken to the lake to be fed to Del Lago. We know it was fed by the disposal of corpses, as Leon S. Kennedy sees a pair of Ganados dump the police officer's corpse into the lake. The Del Lago is an early Plaga experiment conducted by Los Illuminados. It was a salamander that became host to a parasite. The parasite caused mutations in the host, increasing its size considerably. The salamander was sealed in the village lake because it could not be controlled by the Plaga. Later, the creature is woken by Lord Sadler to protect the lake from outsiders. The baptized suffered severe chest pains, resulting in vomiting blood just days after the injection. This affected children the worst, causing severe nerve damage, triggering violent seizures. None survived. Rodrigo writes that more of the adults are becoming emotionally impaired. He says that some days he does not eat at all. He wanders around the village aimlessly, murmuring to himself and swearing underneath his breath. Later, he too begins vomiting blood. The villagers are slowly becoming ganados. They blindly follow orders given by Sadler and his lieutenants to kill outsiders. <laughs> 